Hello everyone, I'm Hu Jiaqi. Today, I'm going to talk about how the devil of technology is released. I'll begin with gene-edited babies. On November 26th, Chinese scientist He Jianqui claimed that his team had helped make twin girls by altering the genes of a fertilized egg, naturally immunized against AIDS. The twin babies are the world's first gene-edited ones. The news made a stir around the world. The scientific research was criticized widely and even denounced by many scientists who signed a joint statement describing the trial as unethical or unsafe. When I was asked to comment on the news, I responded that when Pandora's box opens, the devil is released and never goes back. Devil in its nature is to hurt people. Instead of blaming the devil for hurting anyone, why don't we try to never let the devil out? I don't refer the devil, of course, to a certain scientist or the two baby girls. I definitely wish the babies and their offspring a healthy life. The devil I mentioned means the evil side of science and technology. In fact, the Pandora's box remains open, dressed in a glamorous coat of kindness and hope. The devil is warmly welcomed with flowers and applause. Being a double-edged sword, science and technology can both benefit and destroy mankind. The more capable science and technology are of doing anything good to mankind, the stronger they are to bring in hell. The greedy, selfish, and short-sighted nature makes human beings merely see the bright side of science and technology while ignore the dark side, or simply believe weal is ours and woe is others. Obviously, many scientists have spotted the insecurity of science and technology, but they chose to conceal the truth. How did the devil of genetic technology come out? In the mid-19th century, it was largely argued that heredity was a mixed process. Austrian scientist Mendel had been conducting genetic research by hybridizing peas. In the 1860s, he proposed that heredity is an indivisible and independent unit, rather than a mixed process. This independent unit is called a gene later, but the nature of gene was unknown. Afterwards, studies continued for another 50 to 60 years. In the early 20th century, American scientist Morgan used the fruit fly as a subject to study genetic problems and concluded that genes are located on chromosomes. More than 40 years after that, by 1953, it was proposed that the DNA molecule in the chromosome acts as the carrier of the genetic information. But at this time, the issue remained a bit obscure. It was not completely figured out until 1967 when scientists discovered that genes are fragments of DNA. Not only do chromosomes have DNA, but mitochondria and chloroplasts have small amounts of DNA. There are many bases in DNA, which are not arranged randomly, but in a code sequence. The code sequence is precisely the genetic code. After Mendel's research, it took more than a century to figure the problem out. It is even longer if we count in those periods prior to Mendel. I just mentioned some nodes. What's my purpose? During that period of more than a century, numerous scientists had been conducting relevant research, drawing numerous conclusions. My point is that the devil of science and technology did not come out by itself. It was us that have made strenuous efforts to make it out. No one forced us to do so, yet we did. With the conclusion about gene and DNA, scientists came up with that gene refers to a specific fragment of DNA molecule which is long chain. It is possible to cut the DNA and re-edit the gene? Or can the gene of any other organism be put on this DNA? If the answer is yes, we can recreate or transform a life. But... It's just an idea on paper. Although the DNA molecule is long-chain, it can only be seen by a microscope. 
it is so tiny that we can neither cut it with scissors nor stick it with a tape. How to solve this problem? Many scientists have conducted research on this problem. Later, an enzyme that can paste DNA was discovered, called ligase. In the 1970s, restriction enzyme was discovered which can cut DNA. Now that there is an enzyme that cuts DNA and an enzyme that binds DNA, it is possible to cut and edit DNA. Soon, scientists adopted gene editing technology to edit many organisms. As of today, our gene editing technology has gone through several generations of development. For example, the CRISPR-Cas9 used to create gene-edited babies is the third generation gene editing technology. There have been a great number of gene editing results. For example, genetically modified food, like genetically modified fish, genetically modified cattle, and genetically modified rabbits. Transgenic technology stimulates the growth of these animals, makes the meat delicious, and enables cows to produce more milk. There are also many genetically modified plants, such as soybean, corn, and cotton, which are resistant to pests and diseases, can grow fast with a high yield. To make a genetically modified organism, we must first understand the genome of the organism. Which organism's genome interests people most? Human genome, of course. In 1985, an American scientist proposed to study the human genome. In 1990, the United States led the launch of the Human Genome Project. The Human Genome Project, the Project Apollo designed to land humans on the moon, and the Manhattan Project, studying the atomic bomb, are collectively called the three major scientific research projects in human history. The Human Genome Project aims to accurately sequence the more than 3 billion base pairs that make up human genes. From 1990 to 2006, scientists from the US, UK, France, Germany, Japan, and China spent 16 years on completing the project. The project laid a foundation for the unraveling of all human genetic codes. Just before the project was completely done, a follow-up plan called ENCODE was launched in 2003. This huge project gathered a myriad of scientists from the US, UK, Spain, Singapore, and Japan, who, from September 2003 to September 2012, spent nine years accomplishing the plan. What problem did this plan aim to solve? It aimed to analyze all the functional elements of the human genome. Today, many scientists are working on the Human Proteome Project. With the successive completion of massive projects, the doors of the colossal warehouses keeping the secrets of human life have been swiftly opened one by one. Anyone can go inside and do something. You may either do something good or bad there. Some wonder whether we can prevent bad things through legal or other means. The answer is no. Even if a perfect legal system and the best moral values can impose restrictions on a hundred, a thousand, or even ten thousand people from doing something wrong, nothing can guarantee that those the ten thousand and first person will not violate the law or moral ethics. Like gene edited babies, which are considered unethical or unsafe, even if He Jianghui didn't do it, others would. I can now judge another bioengineering project with confidence, namely cloning technology. The sheep and the cow have been cloned, but no human has been cloned. Why? There also exists an issue of ethics and safety, but I can say with certainty human cloning will work sooner or later. After the emergence of any scientific and technological achievement, we human beings will apply it to the fullest extent as usual. On the positive side, we will apply it to the fullest extent. On the negative side, 
we will also apply it to the fullest extent. Take the gunpowder as an example. We can use it to blast mountains for building roads and build canals to divert water for the benefit of mankind. But we can also use it to make guns and bombs to attack humans. And the more powerful and advanced the guns and bombs are, the effect will be better. Take nuclear energy as another example. It can be used either to generate electricity for the benefit of mankind or to study nuclear weapons to destroy mankind. Then, to what extent will genetic technology do harm to human beings? Just when the genetic technology took shape, humans used it to transform biological weapons and modify the DNA of biotoxins, such as viruses and bacteria, and re-edit their genes to make them attack humans' vital organs specifically thus increasing the destruction rate of biological weapons by countless times. According to a report, the U.S. had made a biotoxin called pyrotoxin through gene editing technology. Merely 20 grams of pyrotoxin can make billions of people around the world infected with a shocking mortality rate. As we unravel more and more secrets of human life, and learn more about other organisms that may harm humans, when we want to attack a part of human body or the entire human race, our targets will become more and more precise, our means more and more effective, and the destructive power increasingly stronger. Just give you an example of something horrible. What if a biologist having a thorough understanding of the genes of the human brain created a superhuman with an IQ of over 1,000 by modifying the human brain. An individual with an IQ of 110 or 120 is considered very smart, and those whose IQ exceeds 140 are geniuses. If we engineer a person with an IQ of over 1,000 but a bad character, aren't we ruled by such a morally corrupt person? Another concern is that the development of nuclear weapons requires national efforts, whereas genetic technology can be acquired by a highly skilled biologist in his own laboratory. The behavior of a country is easy to control, but that of individuals is difficult to control. Therefore, many scientists fear that genetic technology could wipe out human beings. And it wouldn't take long to produce the means of extermination. The development of genetic technology dates back to the late 1970s and early 1980s, only 30 to 40 years ago. Since genetic technology has come this far over the past 30 to 40 years, what will happen in another 30 to 40 years? What about in 70 to 80 years? Having studied human issues for nearly 40 years, I have drawn a host of conclusions. One conclusion is that the continued development of science and technology will soon bring forth human extinction in two to three centuries or even just before the end of this century. Only when human beings unite to strictly limit the development of science and technology and to seal up some dangerous scientific and technological achievements can we survive forever. By the way, genetic technology of bioengineering isn't the only one that threatens to wipe out the human race. The nanorobots developed by nanotechnology have also aroused concerns among scientists. If the robot program is out of control to replicate indefinitely, it could exterminate human beings. Artificial intelligence is also a concern as scientists fear it could wipe out the human race. Therefore, I think it's time for Pandora's box to be closed. Thank you.